but uh, right now let's meet a lady who's probably most famous for her big movie way back in the early 1980s. It's become a cult classic now. It's called uh, Breaking Glass. As well as that, she had a massive hit with a great song called Will You? And here's what happens when I met the lovely Hazel O'Connor. Look out over the ocean and see what you can see. Another time, another people, essentially like you and me. And all these lives at the moment be the building blocks of change. Recognize each circumstance. But then not, not a bloody race get ready, cause here come the time. Here come the place. Here come the moment, here come the perfect days. Yeah. Each and every creature has its true and rightful place. Here we are now. Treasures in their heyday. We are not the overlords. We're sharing this world and this space. Get ready, cause here come the time. Here come the place. Here come the moment. Here come the perfect day. Traveled far, and if you've traveled worldwide, and you get to speak another lingo, well, you're online, you're online, oh yeah. This ain't knowledge, it is power, not to be abused. You use it by little understanding. You gotta use your God given tools, get ready, cause here come the time. So Hazel, welcome back to Belfast. You're becoming a regular visitor here, aren't you? Indeed I am. I love coming here. I've got mates here. So. Great stuff. So you've done a gig tonight. It's a bit of a special gig because before it, they're showing Breaking Glass. Apparently so. I didn't know that until two days ago. Will you be watching it? No. I don't like to see myself. All I can see is my nose growing longer in that because it's a big screen and, and it just makes... I, I'm scared of looking at myself. I don't want to. All right. Nope, okay. Nope. Have you ever watched Breaking Glass all the way through? Yeah. Yeah years ago i'd probably just be a bit disappointed now and be really girly about it and go oh, oh you know i was thinner then or you know i had less <laughs> wrinkles and all that so it's stupid all right. i don't want to make myself suffer <laughs> and is it true that you were the first woman in history to write all the songs and perform them in a movie as well i believe so yeah, yeah. i said uh, yes i think so uh, apparently there was something on the uh, bbc2 recently on the culture show where they remarked on that fact again that you know, uh, it hadn't been done before because it's it's always rare anyway. Women get so few breaks in this yeah. business, even now. You know, unless you're in a put together bandy thing where you have to be, uh, you know, sell your sex for um, for pop music. And I never wanted to do that. I loved the fact that when it happened for me, it was about music and energy as opposed to how pretty you were and. You know, stuff like that. Did you, did you always have full control over your career or was there a time when the record companies were saying, no, Hazel, you must do that, you must do this, you must look this way? Uh, no, 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 they never really did that because it wasn't the kind of way of the time. But uh, they did it in other ways, you know, like by withdrawing any financial <laughs> assistance, <laughs> which is always <laughs> bound to make people change. You know, that happens politically all over the world, doesn't it? You know. Um, it's like, uh, I don't know, oh no, I won't even go there. I was going to say something <laughs> political about Afghanistan and 
you know, substances that people grow there and how the Americans have been trying to stop them growing it. And the poor old growers of the poppy, let's yeah. say, uh, can't understand it because they don't use the stuff. It's just the decadent we Westerners who do. And it's the only way they have to make their money. So, you know. But yes, money is the one that uh, controls people. And sometimes, for instance, when I signed my first deal, uh, the record company did pull the old strings there by saying, well, you know, if you don't sign with us now, mm. nobody will want you. And in a way, that's a form of control because I did sign mm -hmm. it and I didn't have a lawyer there at the time. So it was very bad form, really. Yeah. But no, I remember in, after the film, I was going to Cannes Film Festival and the producer of the film turned up to Heathrow Airport and I'd got, I was fed up with having this thatch cottage type hairdo, yeah. you know, the breaking glass girl. So I thought, I'll go and get me hair done into little uh, kind of platy dreadlock things. And I looked like a white mop, really. <laughs> and I really liked the hairstyle. Nobody had a hairstyle like that in them days. And uh, when uh, I got to the airport and uh, Davina turned up, our producer, she came running up to me and went, Hazel, eh, what have you done to your hair? <laughs> and I said, it's all right, I just, you know, needed a change. And she said, no, no, we needed you the same as the girl in the film. And I said, oh, it'll be all right. And it actually was better than all right because right. it looked so weird that all the paparazzi there in Cannes wanted to take my photograph because I looked so strange. <laughs> so it actually worked, but I didn't know that it was going <laughs> to... Be, it wasn't for that reason. And talking about hairdos, is it true that you once cut David Bowie's hair? Uh huh. It is true. Really? Yeah. How and why? And <laughs> well, see, uh, the guy that produced the uh, Breaking Glass album was a producer called Ta Tony Visconti, and Tony had always been David Bowie's producer, as he was also Thin Lizzy's producer right. and T Rex's producer. Right. And I was a huge fan of David Bowie and Tony knew this. So when we were towards the end of filming, I got a call from Tony saying, Hayes, if you want to come into the studio tomorrow after work, we've got David in recording something for the Kenny Everett show. And right. I said, oh, yes. So I went into the studio, met him, and he was a bit um, funny when he first met me because he, he, he said, oh, you know, I hear you're making a musical film. And I said, yes. And I was terribly like, ooh. <laughs> and then he said, you, what's it called? And I said, Breaking Glass. And then he said, hmm, they must have named it after my song. And I thought, <laughs> no. <laughs> we, we actually didn't. We didn't think of David at that moment right. when we were making the title. Up. I remember making the title because I was saying, to the director, it's like being in a glass ball, this yeah. character that I'm going to play, and she eventually is trying to smash out. Breaking glass, we all went. Yeah. But uh, David thought it was named after his song, so I said a big no. <laughs> and, uh, and then I thought, oh, you'll probably take offence of that. <laughs> and then he said, do you want me to write any songs for you? Oh, wow. And I said, actually, they're all written, <laughs> done and dusted, thank you. And, uh, and, the, and then he, he was really sweet, and instead of being, you know, taking the omp mm -hmm. with me, he said, uh, hey, you cut hair, because I used to give Tony Visconti the old trim <laughs> every starting, because my mum was a hairdresser, so she taught me a bit. And uh, I said, yeah, I do, I cut Tony's hair. He said, would you give us a haircut? And I, oh, I didn't want to at all because he was one of my heroes. Yeah. And imagine making a huge, horrible <laughs> slip on your hero's exactly. hair. Yeah. You know, I can remember doing bossing me husband's hair once, you know, and I was doing it on a number two. And he said, oh, just take the blade off and do it raw. And I went, are you sure? Are you sure? And I started to do that. And he went mm, like that. And suddenly there was a big hole. And I had visions of doing that to David's hair. Oh and I didn't have proper scissors. And we only had old dirty tea towels to put round him. <laughs> But he took it all in his, his, his stride. It was brilliant. And his, but his assistant, I thought she was yeah. going to, you know, scratch my eyes out. <laughs> she was watching me, you know, every move. Oh, brilliant. So moving on from Bowie to somebody else now, George Michael. Well, I read somewhere that you apparently snogged George we Michael. We didn't snog. We had a kiss, right. a little kiss. In a, I did a pop video for um, a song called Don't Touch Me, which is kind of apt for yeah. me and George. <laughs> and he, he, he and I had become friends. And um, the people that had made Club Tropicana video were making this video for Don't Touch Me. And they said, why don't we ask George? Mm -hmm. And we had a little script where there was going to be a kind of a private... I was private detective and I was supposed to be looking at my 
boyfriend, but we didn't know it was boyfriend at the beginning right. of the little movie. And George was going to be the boyfriend. So it was um, me spying on George and then eventually having little flashbacks on how we used to be together. And so there was a little kiss. Oh, right, right. That was all, you know, it <laughs> wasn't really a snog. But of course, um, the papers, you know, took it up as yeah. a snog. And then they started to write that we were... Uh, having a scene together and that he was moving out of his mother's house to move in with the, what was it, much more experienced Hazel <laughs> O'Connor. And I didn't know whether they meant more experienced than his mother right. or more experienced singer or what they meant, you know, it was like... So Hazel, with all those great stories, there must be a book in there somewhere. Haha, -ha, there <laughs> is a book. I've, I've finished it, I've finished my book, I've been writing it for about two and a half years. It's finished except for... I'm never sure what the last chapter will be right. for, for, you know, because I thought I'd finished it six months ago and now we're six months and yeah. um, I'm only just getting a literary agent for it. So if in another six months when it's time to really go to press, something else has happened that's exciting or interesting, yeah. I'd, I'd want to be able to put that in. Because there's a kind of a, sto a, a storybook of anecdotes, I think. Because I have quite a few stories, yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about plans for new material as well? The last album was a big success. Is there another one in the pipeline? Oh, yeah, well, I'm doing something interesting next. I'm doing a... Well, I've done... Um, there's a dance mix finally coming out of Will You. Great. Um, but because I've just got myself a little um, plot of land in France, I uh, would like to get some work in France, so I thought the best thing to do mm -hmm. was to put a vocal of... Uh, will you in French as well? Yes. So we have a dance mix in French and English, and that's coming out in, for the summertime. And that same company want me to uh, do an album of covers and a few duets, but they've got to be covers of other women's songs and a oh, few of my great. own. And, and I'd kind of like to do that. It'd be nice. I keep touching your knee. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm only doing it by accident. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I'm going to do that next, I think, with that company. And then I'm going to finish the album that I've been doing with Martin Russian for the last three years okay. because we can only record in between me being on the road and when I'm around yeah. or when he's not busy you know lots of things when you're doing with your friends and I kind of like it too you know it's, it's, no, it's not so much of a hurry rush hurry rush yes, yes just when we can and then I think you get the best out of people you know and it's right. the only way because <laughs> I'm always busy great stuff well Hazel good luck with all that and enjoy your gig tonight in Belfast okie dokie thank you Been here before. Well, I do. You see a face in no place. Maybe it's just a boo. You better believe it. Read it. You know the next line. You better believe it. The feeling. Time after time, I am dreaming. Hey, I'm a dreamer.
And to keep up to date with uh, what Hazel O'Connor is up to, why not check out her website, hazelo'connor.com.